How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Good. Good. You look well. You look actually. You've got good colour, considering you know it's not really you know good weather weather where you are. It really isn't. I, I have no idea how that's happened, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> go Thanks with very it. Much. Go with it. It's where about you, you, man? Where where are you based? In Cape Town. I was just saying it's thirty five degrees here. Oh wow! Um, so um, I'm sorry for that. Um, no, that's okay. Enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> but congratulations! I think <clears throat> you know. In the ten minutes that we've got, we've I'd like to talk to you for you know longer than that. But in the ten minutes that we do have, um, you are one of the most prolific, uh, you know, songwriters and uh, recorders of albums that I that I've ever met in the thirty odd years that I've been doing wow. this. Um, so you're never shy of a song, that's for sure. No, that's that's very true. Yeah, this is my thirteenth record, uh, which is quite weird to say, to be honest, but. I've always just been really lucky, mate. I think I, I think because I can write anywhere that I am. You know, I don't I don't have to sort of set aside a chunk of time to go and write an album. It's it just happens. Mm. So I, you know, whether I'm touring or or got downtime or whatever it is, I, I'm always with my guitar and I'm always writing. And and I think it's it's a really important thing just to keep on going, keep that plate spinning, mm. uh, because you know, of course there have been times when I, I haven't written for a few months and you you just start to feel a little bit out of touch with it. So. As much as I can, I try and write every day, actually. Is it hard sometimes? I mean, because it sounds like it comes to you, but, you know, when you decide that, okay, now I'm going to do it, you know, sometimes is it, is it, it's not necessarily a natural thing to do. You have to kind of get back into it, like being writing fits or, you know, in the same way that an athlete is. Very rarely. I mean, I think because I'm usually an album ahead of myself at all times, you know, so so I never feel that pressure of oh goodness me, I need to I need to get some songs from somewhere. It's been too long. I need an album. Mm. I've never been in that situation, which I'm very very thankful for. So I've never had the panic. And the last thing I want to do is write a song when I'm not feeling like it. You know, I just don't think I just don't think it works like that. I think for me, I have to just be in the right headspace and sort of available to to catch to catch the magic. You know, and this album in particular. Um, is uh, I don't want to call it a breakup album, but <clears throat> it um, it kind of started out that way, didn't it? Yeah, and I mean it is called "Songs for the Drunk and Broken Hearted," so you'd be forgiven. You'd be forgiven. <laughs> um, you missed that? Yes. Yeah, I mean definitely, definitely that's a running theme throughout the records. Uh, I, I went through a breakup uh, just before lockdown, so it's sort of the, the double whammy of the two was. Um, yes. It was obviously a very difficult, difficult time, but a very rich time for, for songwriting. I think I'm not the first songwriter or, or artist to say that, you know, in their most uncomfortable times, that's probably when they're, they're discovering their, their best work, you know. So, um, yeah, it's been a really interesting journey, this one, because it's it was kind of we thought we'd finished it early in 2020. It was meant to come out in May. Yeah. And we held it back because of everything going on. And man, I'm it's been such a lesson. I'm so glad I did because just having that extra time, one thing I, I wrote a, a load of new songs in lockdown and we en ended up adding a few of them on, mm. but just having time to live with it, the album, live with the songs, you just start to uncover certain things that you could do a bit better or aren't quite right. And having the time to go back into the studio and, and, and remedy all of that mm. has taught me a big lesson. I, th I think moving forward, I need to give myself a little bit more time still be prolific still pump the albums out but but mm. there's there's a there's a, a, a line somewhere in the middle which is a happy medium yeah well 13 albums in well 14 albums in 13 years is you know kind of you know it's insane that yeah you know, at best but it does talk to you obviously your skill and your ability to be able to do that but you know listening back to this album for as long as you did before it was released was it difficult to do because of obviously the subject matter was so personal to you you know or did you find yourself going through a kind of cathartic experience of because you got, they got to percolate you know with you before you let them go yeah it's it's a really interesting one because i think i think now i listen back to the record you know it was sort of those songs were written over over the course of two years and it almost spans the sort of you know still being in a relationship but not being sure to the breakup and the aftermath and i really like that actually you know it's it's sort of approaching the same subject matter, but you know, from very different um, perspectives, mm. and I think that's I think that's added to the depth of, of the record. As far, 
it's it's painful writing the songs as far as what once they've been written and, and certainly once they've been recorded it's not like i care any less it's not like i you know feel them any less but it's not it's not a, a painful thing to to play those songs or to listen to those songs now mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> i just want to quickly touch on the fact that you did a show recently at the royal albert hall all by yourself um you know which is a common theme in the world as we know unfortunately yeah. um yeah. But, um, you know, live streaming is, is not new to you. You've been doing it. Um, I think that you did something in 2017. Um, so it was yeah. almost like you were preparing for, you know, Armageddon that has, you know, is our current reality. So, um, yeah. you know, I mean, what was that like doing that? Because it must have been quite surreal. It was. It was, uh, you know, in normal times, we'd always do some kind of album release show or album party mm. or something like that. And obviously that wasn't available to us. So we kind of put our heads together and thought, what's, what's, what, how is there a way that we can play some songs and celebrate with fans uh, in the current climate? And yeah, we came up with the, I mean, the Royal Albert Hall is just such a wonderful space. It's so iconic, drenched in history and mm -hmm. acoustically, it's a beautiful room as well. Uh, I was lucky enough to play there a few years ago um, with human beings in it, which was even better. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yeah, I know, crazy, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, there was, it was obviously, you know, you, you missed the energy of the crowd and all that kind of stuff. But to, I hadn't played a gig at that stage for mm -hmm. nine, 10 months. And just to go and stand in a room like that and belt out some songs for a day was, was pretty lovely. And yeah, we filmed it and it, it, I'm really happy with how it came out. I think we're, we're looking into how we can sort of uh, distribute that at the moment. But mm. um, yeah, it was, it was a lovely thing to do. And, and, um, and yeah, as close to a gig as I've got to for, for a while. So I'll take it. Good, good. And I'm, I'm not sure if this week's charts up, but is it number one year? No, we, we lost out on, on week one to Barry Gibb, which I know. I mean, I know. There's, no shame, there's no shame in losing to a BG in a chart battle. Uh, I, exactly. Just, just being in that chart battle with a BG kind of makes me laugh. Um, you know, I was, I was busking on street corners five or six years ago. So it's, it's a pretty surreal uh, feeling to to have that, um, and yeah, number two ain't bad, I suppose. Not bad. I mean, the fact that you dropped in at number two is 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 extraordinary. But I think yeah. you know if you take everything into into account, certainly you know, as, like we were saying, our current reality. I think lyrically, your entire body of work that you have, um, you know, not to call it dystopian, but the thing is that you know you, it's deep. It's it it it's, yeah. it's a lot of it is difficult listening. Um, as much as it is beautiful, but I think it's, you know, <clears throat> at, at this odd stage in your career, your your music and your catalog, I think, is 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 enjoying some kind of uh, attention that perhaps when things were fine and people were good and everything is, on, people are having to deal with stuff in a way that you deal with that, you know, and the way that you've dealt with things in your songs, you know, since you started writing. That's really interesting. I, ha I hadn't really thought about that. I, I definitely feel like um, the timing of this album, and especially Sword from the Stone, you know, which is, a, which is a song that I wrote in lockdown and I think is universally relatable to, you know, I, I feel like everybody can, can at least understand elements of that song. Yeah, um, beautiful video, by the way. Uh, thank you. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't really thought about it like that. I, I, I think, yes, you're probably right in, in, in a time like this and it, unprecedented time like this uh, people are probably searching for 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 meaning within music whereas when they're when when the world is in a more normal state it's it's probably less prevalent and, uh, and less necessary for some people so yeah it's a, it's a really really interesting point that you've mm. raised and i hope you're right <laughs> yeah i think <clears throat> well i think so the, the, the writing is on the wall the body of work is there and um, I have exactly <clears throat> one minute left, so. Oh, don't worry about that too much, honestly. If you, if you want to chat for a few minutes, that's great. No, good, um, thank you. Um, I, I will keep it short. The, the interesting thing that I, you know, in, I mean, I've followed your work, you know, for a number of years. Thankfully, your, you know, your music is available in South Africa, uh, which is fantastic, and through, uh, through the record label here. But what I found very interesting is that, you know, have you actually made any money? You've sold a a lot of records but you give us you give so much of it away the philanthropic side of of what you do is extraordinary you know for somebody who isn't Barry Gibb yeah um yeah I mean I'm lucky because I'm an independent artist and I've always funded my own my own way 
you know um so i pay for all the records all the videos all the touring and everything else and as a result obviously the back end is is better as well i don't have a major label taking 98 percent of of what is made um so yeah i'm not barry gibb but i feel very fortunate i you know i spent years and years busking uh quite often next to homeless people and big issue sellers and mm. that experience taught me an awful lot in humility and and I understood my place in the world an awful lot better from from going through that. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's something I will forget in a hurry slash ever. And I feel like I've been so lucky. I make music for a living and and make a good living out of it. And yeah, you know, I write so much and the albums that I've sort of donated all the profits to, you know, we did one for a food bank charity. We did one for Shelter, which is a homeless charity here in the UK. And one for UNICEF a few years ago. And it's just, it's something that actually, you know, I can do with relative ease. And it feels like it's genuinely doing something. You know, it's not just turning up, putting on a suit and tie and playing Let A Go at some charity event. Cool. I will do that as well. But I feel like an album, especially in this day and age, what's, ex what's really exciting about that is that because of Spotify, because of YouTube, because of the way music is consumed now, it's not just about an album coming out, everyone buys it, there's your lump sum to charity. It's an ongoing situation. You know, so year on year, these charities will will benefit from from the streams, from from the views. Mm. Um, it's something I'm proud of and it's something that I want to carry on for, for the rest of my life, really. Mm. No, I mean, I think it's admirable and I think there's, the fact that you do it so freely is extraordinary. And, um, and I think that's, again, that's another aspect of, that resonates with, with your audience because there's, you know, there's authenticity in the songs, but um, it, it runs through every single thing that you do. Yeah, I'm actually an arsehole. I just come <laughs> out. <laughs> well, a drunken one at that, if you are. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to let you go because you are, you know, uh, certainly, you know, very, very busy and very important. But I, I, I really, really appreciate the time and thank you for the music. Um, and um, I wish you well. And I'm, I'm sure we'll probably see another album in six months' time, if not before. Probably. <laughs> Jason, thanks, man. This has been a real pleasure. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. I'll catch you, catch you soon. Have a good weekend, sir. Thank you, man. You too. Enjoy cheers. the weather. <laughs> Bye. Shall do. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Bye.